So when we're looking at radical expressions so far, the powers on our variables have either been 1 or 2. And we need to look a little bit larger. So our kind of division with these powers, I've got even and odd numbers. And they behave differently inside of the radicals. So we're going to take a look at the even powers first. So to take the square root of an even power, such as x to the tenth, we need to notice some things. So what value do I need to square in order to get x10 out? So what power on x do I need? So we need to think back to those rules. When I raise a power to a power, what do I do with those? We multiply them together. So what value do I need to plug in here? x to the fifth. I square that, 5 times 2 gives me 10, and we're there. So then, what does that mean? If I'm looking at the square root of x to the 10th, it's really the square root of x to the 5th squared. So we evaluate out as x to the 5th. Because if I take that value and square it, I get x to the 10th. So in reality, what's going on with these? How can we kind of simplify when I'm taking the square root of a value? What are we doing with those powers? I take 10, and what do I need to do to get me to 5? Divide it by 2, since we're dealing with the square root, factors of 2. So whenever we have that kind of power, and it's even, in reality, I'm just looking at x raised to the 10th divided by 2, which gives me to the fifth. So we can use that little cheat, cheat, quote unquote, this is actually what's happening, but that quicker version will get us there. So go ahead and evaluate these three. First one, four is even, so it is divisible by two. So how many factors of t am I gonna get out of there? Two of them. And we can always check if I square this quantity, do I get t to the fourth? Yeah. What quantity do I need to square to get me to t to the 20th? t, 10. Again, taking 20, dividing it by 2. And in the last, how many factors of h do I have? If I take 46 and divide it by 2, I get 23. Because again, we could square each of those and get our radicands on the inside of those expressions. So let's look at an odd power now. So we looked at the even, we just have to divide it by 2. But when we have an odd power, we need to express the power in terms of the largest even one, since they evaluate nicely, and the leftovers. So we're going to look at a few examples. The first one, x to the ninth. 9 is not divisible by 2, so it's not going to evaluate out nicely. But how can I break up x to the ninth into two quantities, one with an even power, one with an odd. So the largest even that can come out of 9 is 8. And if I take 8 factors of x out of x to the ninth, how many do I have left over? 1. So we don't need to write the 1 up there. And now, x to the eighth is a perfect square of what? x to the fourth. That one evaluates out nicely since it's divisible by 2. And our leftovers, we have the square root of x. In the next example, we'll just practice a few. And we have some constants out on the front as well. So 32. How do I want to break him up into a perfect square and some other number? 16 and 2. And x to the 15th, 15 is not divisible by 2, but the largest factor of x that we could break it into, 14, and leftovers, we need one more, because when we have the same base and multiplication, we add those powers. So what's evaluating out of here? Perfect square, 16, perfect square, x to the 14th, and we have our leftovers. So the square root of 16 is 4, and again, even power, we just divide it by 2. Seven factors are going to evaluate out, and we're left with what? 2 times x. 
things that are not perfect squares. So go ahead and take these two, simplify them down. So 7 is odd, it's not divisible by 2, but we can break that up into x to the 6th and x. If I add those, do I get to my power over here? Yeah. And a perfect square evaluating out of here is x to the 3rd. Just take our power, divide it by 2. And our leftovers, we have root x. 24, breaking that up into a perfect square and something else. 4 is the largest. It's even, so we should try that. And x to the 11th. How do we want to break that up? x to the 10th. And one left over. So evaluating out of there, perfect squares. Square root of 4 gives me 2. Square root of x to the 10th gives me x to the 5th. And our leftovers are 6x. So let's put all these things together and start solving cases. First one, root 2 and root 14, they can't evaluate, they're not perfect squares. So let's multiply them together. They're both positive, so we're allowed to do that. So underneath my radical now, have that radicand to times 14. We could multiply everything together, or we can just start breaking down 14 into its factors. We can break it into 2 and 7. So we could multiply 2 times 2 and get 4, and that is a perfect square. Another way to look at it, though, is I've got two factors of 2 and one factor of 7. So we've got a perfect square and leftovers. So what evaluates out from my perfect square? 2. And leftover on the inside, root 7. And it's simplified as far as we can go because 7 has no other factors that are perfect squares. It's prime. 7 and 1, and it's not a perfect square. So we know we're done when that happens. And for part B, so square root of 9, that is a perfect square, but I have this entire thing. So I'm going to multiply it all together and combine it underneath one radical. So I've got 3 times 9. And how many factors of x am I going to have underneath here? I've got 3 and another 2, so that gives me 5 altogether. So root 3 isn't going to evaluate. He'll be a part of our leftovers. 9 is a perfect square. So I'm going to leave him, and how do I want to break up x to the fifth into the largest perfect square and something else? So the largest even power is 4, and we need one more factor to get us to 5. So what evaluates out of here? Perfect square, perfect square. So we get 3x2, and on the inside, what's left over? 3 and x. And again, can't take any factors out of there that are perfect squares, so we know that we're done. For the next one, very last, there's lots of different ways that we can go about this. I'm just going to multiply everything together. So I've got 20 times 35. How many factors of C? 1, 2 all together. Nice. He's even. And how many factors of D? I've got 5, 6, 7. Odd. That's fine. We can take care of them. And let's start breaking up the factors of 20 and 35 so we can see what perfect squares we're working with. So 20 and 35 both share a factor of 5 in common. So I'm going to break it up into those. I've got 4 times 5 will give me 20. 4 is a perfect square, which is good. And 35 can break up into 7 and 5. So when I have two factors of some factor, it's going to evaluate out. Because in reality, I'm looking at 25 here. C squared is already a perfect square. How do I want to break up the Ds? 6 and 1. That'll get me to 7. So evaluating out of here. Perfect square, 2. Perfect square of 5 squared will give me 5 out. And we can multiply and simplify at the end. Another perfect square is C2. Another perfect square is D6. So we'll get out D3. And what do we have left over on the inside? We haven't taken care of 7 or D. They're not perfect squares. So we want to make it look nicer on the outside. 
2 times 5 gives me 10. And I've got C, D third, and 70 left over underneath the radical. So there's lots of different ways that you can could have done this. You could multiply all the numbers together, then try to break it up. I don't like working with super large numbers. It's harder for me to see the factors. So if I start small, that's helpful for me. But whichever route is good for you, work with that. Go ahead and take those last three, multiply and simplify them. So looking at these ones, very first, 2 is not a perfect square, neither is 50, but if we multiply them together, I'm looking at the square root of 100, which evaluates out to 10. 10 squared gives me 100. Pretty straightforward. For part B, again, it's usually helpful just to multiply everything in the beginning, see what we're working with. So 8 times 2 gives me 16, which is a perfect square. Awesome. How many factors of x am I going to have? 3 plus 3 is 6 even, awesome, and y to the fourth. So everything's going to evaluate out. What are we getting? Square root of 16 is 4, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 4 divided by 2 is 2. We can always check if I take this value and square it, do I get to my radicand? And very last, multiplying everything together, I've got 50, x to the third, y to the fifth, and how do I want to break up 50 into the largest perfect square and something else? 25 and 2. And I have odd powers on both of those, so we need to split them up. Largest even, that can come out of 3, is 2. And we need one left over. And y5, we want to break up into y4 and one left over. So evaluating out of there, perfect square, perfect square, perfect square. We'll have our leftovers. So the square root of 25 gives me 5. 2 divided by 2, I've got 1 factor of x. 4 divided by 2, I'm left with 2. And on the inside, we have root 2xy. None of those factors are perfect squares, so we know we're done.